Live. Welcome to Studio Day Heffrey and Studio Day Vach the Lombardi. Uh, we're here. It's a Thursday because I canceled yesterday because it's kind of what I do. But we're here. Hi, Vach. What are you doing over there? Finally, Vach has come back to Scoutcast. Oh, crap. Brother Jeff, what's good with you, man? Hey, I didn't. I, I am going to queue up sound effects on my damn board at some point. But no, for no, now, no, I'm just no, I want you to got. chill. I don't want you to work too hard, brother Jeff. I don't want you to, you know, <laughs> don't don't make this a contest, my guy. Just just okay. want to let you know. Um, okay. We haven't scout casted in a while or whatnot. That wasn't by design, but uh, we are content creators. Y'all just going to have to take us as we are. You know what I mean? And just rejoice when we're here. You did? Um, we are here today, so let's get into some sports. Got a couple things I want to touch on today. We're going to touch on the uh, pro days. I'm going to ask, you know, Jeff, some draft-related pro day questions. I kind of want to touch on receivers just a little bit, but I do want to get to a topic that's constantly recurring, okay? Okay, Brother, okay, okay, okay. Brother Jeff, Yo. I, I feel like in this business, you can't just have one opinion forever, you know? You Why have not? To, you, Running you, backs don't matter. I'll keep that forever. What are you, you talking about? You have to be able to change your mind. Because watch this, Jeff. Once upon a time, running backs matter. Then you had to change your mind and be like, okay, cool. They don't matter no more. You see what I'm saying? That's true. That's true. So, yeah. I'm watching Kyle Pitts, right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, let me just kind of run some question by you, though, Jeff. So, in my mind, at first, the idea of drafting a tight end early, sir. In my mind, I'm like, well, but but Vach, you find good tight ends in day two. All the day one tight ends aren't that great. I asked the Twitter machine how they feel about day one tight ends. They say, well, Vach, TJ Hawkinson is good. Well, TJ Hawkinson has some good college film, but last year he was like 68 catches for 700 yards for eighth overall pick. I don't think that's enough. So when I think about tight ends, right, Brother Jeff, I just want you to hear me out. When I think about tight ends, are we undervaluing tight ends because they just go in the second or are we undervaluing tight end because they trash as a whole and that's just where they end up going because they trash as a whole? Because I asked myself, the good tight ends are there. We just don't pick them in the right spots, Jeff. Now, if Gronkowski, uh, if you was if you was able to pick him like twenty first overall, would you do it? If you could of get course. if you could get Kelsey at nineteenth overall, Kittle at you know what I'm saying? If you could get a tight end in the first and they shown production, yes. So that leads me to believe first round tight ends exist. Teams just been doing it wrong, brother Jeff. Yeah, that's um, there's there's thirteen reasons that I I like you, Vach. Uh, and one of them is good questions, man. Um, and so like, I, I kind of had to fight the same thing Yep. because George Kittle, what was he like a third, fourth? Fifth, I don't even remember what round he was picked in. Hold on. Time uh, by Jeff DJ world. Just drop a hundred in my super chat. Just DJ world. Thank you, sir. He says, holla to the return of the scout cast. I didn't mean to cut you off, Jeff, but, but money's is priorities over here. Cut me off when you get yours, please. Oh, DJ on. Oh, DJ got. Oh, DJ. DJ. My man has good sunglasses, a tie on, a shirt that has clearly been done at the laundry. Can I like play it they, again? They, oh, my God. DJ, that's a world record. Can I play it again? Huh? Can I play it again? Can I hit the button again? I, you can play it for the next half hour, as far as I'm concerned. Not only that, but he hit me with a twenty dollars super chat on my last show, and I couldn't get to it. It was after the show. Then he dropped like some more in the cash app. Then he hits this, DJ. I don't know how many stimuluses you got, but sir, the Scoutcast podcast as a whole, Vach and Brother Jeff, appreciate you, sir. That's that's a, a sponsor there, DJ's World, man. That is that's real love, and we appreciate it for sure, for sure. But Travis, mm. that doesn't mean we don't appreciate you coming right. through for a value meal. Right. It doesn't mean we don't we love you too. Right. He's looking at Jaron Reed right now. That's one of the guys. And you know, every time somebody comes available, people are like, "What about the Cowboys?" And I'm always like, "Chill out." But Jaron Reed, yes, please, I'll take him. We'll, um, we'll yes, talk. About it. Now, go ahead, Jeff. I'm okay. sorry to cut you off. Shout out to Naeem for that dub. My super chat too. Go ahead, Jeff. Go, go, go ahead. Okay. Um. So tight ends, like you, I think you basically hit it because it's like. The, the first thing that scares you off about taking a tight end early in a draft is that the great tight ends in the NFL didn't come in the top 10. 
And when people do use top 10 picks, it hadn't really worked out. But it's also, I think, the se- it's a similar thing to when people are like, I don't want a so-and-so position from so-and-so school. Sure. And yeah. I'm like, stop scouting the helmet. Yeah. We're scouting players. And so for Kyle Pitts, I'm like, stop scouting the position and how it's gone and just pick the right players. Sure. And Kyle Pitts is good enough that he's the right player. Like I was talking on the radio today about Kyle Pitts, I think, or maybe it was on the draft show. Like if you're six foot covering two Kyle Pitts, you're too small. Sure. If you're six three covering Kyle Pitts, you're too slow. You're not quick enough. Like Kyle Pitts is a nightmare. If, if he's at ten, I pick him. The end. Like the the end. I don't care who else is available. If Kyle Pitts is there, I pick him. The end. And I don't worry about it. And I also think that he won't be there, so we're not gonna have to worry about it. But yeah, like it's a fair point when you're like, oh, but the good tight ends don't get picked in the top ten. The ones who do are bust. You find tight ends everywhere. Like all those things are true. And it's not even a premium position except for the couple of guys at the very top. Mm -hmm. But if you think he's one of them, you take him. And shout out to Stimulus Checks. They got people hooking us up. Naeem, ScoutCast. Thank you, guys. You guys are beasts tonight. Can you give him one time? Just one time? Could you give him one time? Shit, man. We hit this He also dropped a dub in mind. He says, how awesome would it be if we if we play Ice Cubes, bow down as the Cowboys enter the draft on day one. Bow down when we come to your town, sir. Shouts out to Naeem in that reference. Um, like like Jeff, and I think also what happens with tight end also, um, Naeem just, just dropped another <laughs> dropped another twin in my super chat. It says part two. Uh, do you and Jeff see uh any, anyone from UNT getting drafted on any day? We will talk about it. Uh Jalen Darden, yes. Yes, absolutely. Um so my whole thing, like sometimes too, Jeff, people will manufacture an argument um, just to kind of say what they want to say about it. Like, like with the whole Kyle Pitts thing, they'll call him a big, slow receiver when it's not facts. Then they'll be like, oh, well, he's, you know, mismatching against linebackers and, and safeties. That's not only facts because Patrick Sertan will like a word with you. Boss Man Fat will like a word with you. J.C. Horn, Tyson Campbell will all like words with you. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not just doing this against linebackers now if you want to uh the uh miami kid if you want to get him at tight end and run him against your linebackers and safeties that's fine but jeff this made me think about this vash says this jeff when i'm watching florida film i like this third person thing you got going on though vash says this when when i'm watching florida film Kadarius tony ain't good enough to inspire change in me so if i'm defense coordinator Kadarius tony does nothing for me watch this though jeff you watch Florida tape and you notice that no matter where Kyle Pitts line up, they got to put a corner on him. Like they just, he just demands a corner. You see what I'm saying? He's playing on Florida. So just, you know, he's, he, he's going to get those guys. Can you imagine if he would have played like in an Alabama situation where like Waddle and Smith are over there, then what do you do? Do you put your best corner on Kyle Pitts? Or do you take the chance putting a nickel guy on Kyle Pitts? Which translates into what do you do with Dallas now? Because I think even when he gets to the league, he's going to be a cornerback reliant cover type dude. But if you got Lamb, Cooper, and Gallup, what the hell do you do? I think Kyle Pitts works different in our situation than other situations. Now, when we talk about these top three receivers, Brother Jeff, I got you two seconds. When we talk about these top three receivers, Brother Jeff, I think Smith – Waddle and Chase have more practical use over 70 snaps. But this is a game of inches, and you need playmakers. If Kyle Pitts gets you five to seven catches for 70 yards and two touchdowns every game, one to two touchdowns every game, you can't buy that nowhere else in the draft, Jeff. No, and I think that it also plays into what I talk about with even at wide receiver. Do I think the Cowboys would pick a wide receiver with what they already have? No, I don't think they would do that at 10. But you can. You can pick the best player available. Whoever the best player is, you pick him, and then you make it work. In the case of Kyle Pitts, you can do it one of two ways. You can either try to move Jarwin or Schultz for a player on defense or whatever, and they probably wouldn't get you a ton. Or you could say, okay, I'm going to find a way to replace Michael Gallup too, and I'm going to move him for a defensive player. Like you just, there's two, there's so many ways to construct an NFL roster. The idea mm-hmm. that you can't do a certain thing with one pick that's in the top ten, yeah. I think is crazy. You pick the best player. That's what you do. The end. And sports guru, I appreciate you swinging through the super chat. Says, wasn't Njoku a once in a generation tight end? No, yeah, nah. <laughs> Njoku was a <laughs> he really was cool. good athlete. He like cool. he, he didn't have Kyle Pitts production. Yeah. And the other thing is, Kyle Pitts is young. And Kyle Pitts went from six drops to no drops. Yeah. And Kyle Pitts' production is going doot, 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 and he's getting better and better, and he hadn't even been playing tight end that long. Kyle Pitts is a freak show. And, like, and, 
And if you're wrong, you're wrong. Be, yeah. But you can be wrong in any position. Be wrong picking who you think is the best player. That's that's all I'm saying. And he can run routes, Jeff, so we ain't just making this shit up. Uh, that's Ky- what I'm he can line up out wide. Sure. Yeah, he'll line up out wide, and he'll route up a 5'11 corner. Sure. Okay? So we're not talking about a 6'6 guy that's jogging down the seam and catching it between it and getting hit or running five-yard option routes. We're talking about he'll line up everywhere, and he'll beat anybody you've got on your roster. South Carolina knew. Like Kadarius Tony's a stud. Kadarius Tony might go in the first round. But South Carolina knew when they showed up. J.C. Horn, who covers the best player on the other team, Absolutely. he went straight to Kyle Pitts. Mm-hmm. They said they're tight end. That's who you got today. And that was a fun battle, by the way. It was. Like Pitts did get him, mm-hmm. but Horn annoyed the hell out of him. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> easy. Because he's grabbing the hell out of him and he's <laughs> cheating. Well, he's going to grab him. That's Horn. We're going we're gonna to talk about that later. Trust me. Cairo in my chat box says, weren't you just downing downing Pitts a month ago? I mean, yeah, but we just opened up the show talking about growth, right? And then I wasn't downing Pitts. I was downing the idea of tight end in the top 10, which is different because if Kyle Pitts had a friend that witnessed a murder on draft day and he couldn't get drafted, and he was just an undrafted dude. 32 teams want Kyle Pitts. This isn't a Kyle Pitts conversation. This is a tight end in the first round conversation. Um, so that's that. Um, well, and here's here's one other one because Formula, my guy, he's always hitting me up. I love you, buddy. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you. He said, I'm worried the boys are going to draft Micah Parsons now if Horn's gone at 10. Any consideration for Newsom there? Um, I, because I still do feel that way about linebacker. Like, I don't want a linebacker at 10. Now, I could change that in the vein of Kyle Pitts if – I thought Micah Parsons had great instincts on tape. And if I'd seen him and and being used in coverage and he was good at it, Mm -hmm. like if if you made the prospect good enough, I'd make an exception and I'll do that for Kyle Pitts. I won't do it for Micah Parsons because I don't think he's the same level of prospect. Agreed. Totally agree. Let me ask you this then, Jeff. Let's, uh, let's just take draft number totally out of the, you know what I'm saying? Like, because this ain't just like cowboy talk. This ain't just 10th overall talk. This for everybody. So, Kyle Pitts or Patrick Sertan? Pitts. Pitts or J.C. Horn? Pitts. Pitts over Panay Sewell. Pitts or Panay Sewell? That's where it gets tricky. Mm. That's where it gets tricky. It's, mm. it's about to get tricky. It's about to get mm. tricky. Sewell. Pitts or Jamar Chase? Pitts. So you got Pitts going like six, seven, eight. Like right I think Pitts. Is, I think Pitts is going to go to Cincinnati at five. Is that irresponsible though? Is that irresponsible nope. of Cincinnati? Hell no! Your quarterback's going to love you for it. Yeah. Joe Burrow's going to be like, "Wait, you gave me a guy who I can literally miss him by four feet and he'll catch it anyway." Sweet, I like it. Okay, so watch this. If 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 it's if it's that situation, right? If they if it's Cincinnati, right? Say quarterbacks go one, two, three, four. Zach Wilson trade da da da. So the best player on the board at that point is Kyle Pitts. Yes. With Sewell on the board. Quarterback went one through one through three. Um, gosh, I think that's close. I yeah. think I think between Sewell and then him and also I would throw Rashawn Slater in the mix. Mm-hmm. The only reason I think if you gave me an option at Sewell that I would take it is because then I'm gonna lean a little bit on floor safety and position value. Because I think Sewell is a good enough prospect that I'll say just give me the left tackle. I think he's gonna be good for 10, 15 years. Give me the left tackle. But Pitts is good enough that I'd take him over any defensive player in this draft. Mm, would I take him over Rashawn Slater? So I think I think Pitts as a player got to be at the top of your board somewhere. It just comes down to drafting tight end over a franchise left tackle or yes. tight end over lockdown corner. That's, that's the conversation. And it's a tricky conversation, man. It's a rough one. It's yeah, a rough one. yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the fun of it. Is at some point you got to put them in order. For now, I can just cheat. I can just be like, "What are you talking about? I got Pitts as a first rounder. I got Sewell as a first rounder. Like, yeah, they're first rounders. What do you want? I don't have to put them in order." Fair enough, my guy. But I will when somebody makes me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on, man. Let's uh, move. I think that's 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 interesting conversation, that, and and y'all gonna have to consider things like this. You know what I mean? So when we're doing live draft shows on draft day, we gotta talk about it. Um, I think it's so interesting how pro days ended up. You know, with you know, first of all, like how come media people act like they've been like they didn't know J C Horn was nice? Not not media people like media people, but like. If you go on Twitter, J.C. Horn has a good pro day, and all of a sudden we're pretending like he got some brand new film or something. No. Well, yeah, I do think that that is the way it kind of felt. And I bet you, you know what I think part of that is? That Caleb Farley got his second back uh, vasectomy. 
He got a second back vasectomy. I don't know the word when you do the back surgery, so I just called it a back vasectomy. vasectomy yeah. So he had his second one, and so I think that cleared out Caleb Farley as anybody's top corner. Sure. And now one and two are Sertan and Horn, where before it was a three-way battle, and now it's a two-way battle. So I think for people who may not have loved Horn but liked Horn, maybe getting his pro day elevated him. But, I mean, you and I were already there, but that's why – that's why, like, I work with and talk to a lot of uh, draft experts. And if you're on my YouTube channel right now and you don't follow Vach yet, you should because Vach is as good as or better than anyone I've ever worked with at this stuff. Wow. Um, Humble, man. Humble. He had J.C. Horn right even before I did. Now, if we're both wrong, then we're idiots. But, but Vach is a monster. If he tells you that somebody is number one at a position, uh, it doesn't mean he has to be for you. You do the work, you get to put them in your own order, but Vach is um Vach is gonna be on it. Wow. That's just 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 hug me, man. Hug me from over there. We'll kind of forever meet from over there. You know what I'm saying? Cause you cause you already get busy in this world. You know, everybody know Jeff. You know what I mean? They 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 don't know that Jeff got a YouTube page. So y'all go follow Jeff Kavanaugh on 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 YouTube, but 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 they know how Jeff get busy. Y'all y'all know Jeff. So it's just it's just, you know what I mean? Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um so what I found interesting, though, Brother Jeff, is how we trusted the tape this year. Shouts out to you and Dana or whatever. We trusted tape this year. So Sertan and J.C. Horn have a great pro day. We go, I right, excitement about Horn and Sertan, but Jason Oway and Michael Parsons have a good pro day. We just go, okay, y'all just ran fast, whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they just, they, Oway, they just ran fast. I get, Oway is like the ultimate challenge for where do you pick him? Because Jason Owe, anybody who doesn't know him, he checked in at I believe it was six five two fifty seven. He ran a four three nine, and then he ran a six eight in the three cone, sure. which if you get under seven seconds is considered top tier. Yes. So to get to six eight and to run a four three, dude had zero sacks this year for Penn State, but on tape he is active athletic he doesn't get sacks but he affects the pocket and he is effective against the run but zero sacks for a pass rusher with elite 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 tools yeah i mean if i were picking at 28 i'm swinging and everybody's gonna be like you do know you're betting on an outlier and i'd be like i know but did you see that he's 6'5 260 and he runs a sub seven seven cone and a four three um i'm gonna we can make this work. We're going to make this work. I think he'll be taken in the first round because teams can't draft, but I don't think he's very good at defensive end. You know what I mean? He is the athlete, and somebody's going to draft him off measurables alone. I get that. But people are super confident in their ability to develop, especially if you're young in football years. OA didn't start playing football until 2016. He'd never played until 2016. Here's my question, though, brother Jeff. If you that big and run a damn four three, why don't you just go play linebacker or like strong safety or running back or something? Somebody hit me up in my uh, in the uh, in. something. Somebody hit me in the uh, social media uh, situation. Uh, it was like, well, Vat, you you uh, think he can lose ten pounds and play linebacker? That motherfucker run a four three. He ain't got losing no more weight. Let him just <laughs> no. let him just be a two hundred and fifty pound four three running. Will uh Will Sam linebacker or something? I think that'll be a great spot for him. You know and he I mean? outshuttled Parsons. Yes. So like Parsons is a freak himself. Yes. He ran the four threes. He's a freak. Mm -hmm. Um, went sub seven in the three cone. Sure. Parsons could play defensive end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they could play linebacker. <laughs> it's it, whatever. And it's, then somebody's and then look, somebody gonna be like, well, well, you got to teach Oway how to play linebacker at that point. Just like you got to teach Parsons how to play linebacker. Also, you know what I mean? Both these dudes are high upside athlete dudes. So. I'll get creative. Like if I can get Owe in the third or something, it ain't gonna be that. But if right. like somebody doesn't believe in his defensive end abilities and he fall to third, I'll take his ass and put him at linebacker quick or at safety or something, strong safety. Yeah, that's um when you say third round, I can get with you on that. Sure. The one thing I can't stand is when people take a first round player and they're like, You should move him to this position. And I'm like, You don't understand how it works. Yeah. Like there's a lot of people in cowboy world that are like, Why don't you make Jalen Smith a pass rusher? And I'm like, Well, a good blitzing linebacker does not equal a good defensive end. It's different at all. Like we're not talking about the same thing. It's totally different. So yeah, if you want to try a position change with a guy that you think has the tools to do it and you're talking about a third round pick, let's dance. I tell you what. I would take Owe to play tight end. Mm -hmm. If you told me he'd never played football before, sure, I'd take him in like the fourth round. Yeah, I'd be like, he's how big and runs like what? Yeah, 
Okay. Okay. I'm going to take him in the fourth round. I'll teach him football. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Owe or Russo? Owe. That's interesting because I'll I'll take Russo there. I'll, I'll, really? I'll take Russo. I think Russo is a better. You've always liked Russo though. You've always been a big Russo guy. That is hilarious. I think uh, I think Russo is a better defensive end today. I just think his his build and his his combination of traits doesn't make sense. But he knows how to play defensive end. So if I had to mold him into something, I guess I can make him something. Owe is an Olympian. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I this is no, this is a one, this is a one dollar super chat, uh, five year bet, five year bet, Russo versus Owe career. Who has a better career? I'm going Owe. You, you get Russo. I get a dollar on that. We can, we can do that. We'll do that. Anything, anything to make you bet on Russo. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not happy about it. Go ahead, get your money. Shout out to Burning G family. Two dollar. Jaron Reed got released. Should the Cowboys sign him? Yes. <laughs> Normally, I don't entertain the, hey, somebody got released. Should they sign him? Uh, in the case of Jaron Reed, yes, because I've seen that dude just maul everyone. But, but Jeff, that's that's borderline annoying, though, man. Like uh, like the other day, yo, Vach, you think we should go get the Fuller kid? Yeah, fam, that, come on. <laughs> come on, water wet. You know what I'm saying? We should. <laughs> Will it happen? Money situation? C- come on. But we, th- this is easy. Any like This ain't like we talking about Richard Sherman or something, because I can make the argument why I wouldn't want Richard Sherman. But like a c- Jaron Reed, come on, man. C- come on. Jaron Reed solves my defensive problems, Quickly. at least the biggest one. My linebackers are now clean Indeed. because I've got a monster. Indeed. Adrian Lindsay dropped a deuce in Super Chat. He says uh, he sounds like Byron Jones. Nah, Byron was actually a good corner. And he was an Olympian. You know, he just turned into a better corner the, the more he played or whatever. But mm. Always slander. Yes. Yeah. Slander. So, so you got him as a third round guy? Yeah, roughly. Sure. Um, And he's only there because I like other guys better than him. Like guys like Peyton Turner better than him. I like Ronnie Perkins better than him. And the more you go down the list, it just naturally drops him down. Not, not that I dislike him, but I just don't think there's enough bodies to fit into the second round to, to put him in there also. Yeah, I got OA in the second, like right there with Peyton Turner. Okay. Um, yeah. So just a little higher. And I hate Rousseau more than you. I'm excited about that. That's so interesting. But watch this, though, right? If we look at OA as a second round pick, we got like 10 second round corners and like three second round receivers and four second round offensive line. And, and we we running out of second rounds. So I just think he's going to end up by that rule. You see what I'm saying? Oh, okay, but you're talking about grading standards because we both know he's getting picked in the first, right? Yes, he's getting picked in the first. Okay. It's just that if you if you magic wind it, it, it I wouldn't touch him to the third because I just, you know, that's just how it works. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it works. Um, Did it bother you that Perkins tested as a bad athlete? Or at least not a good athlete? It sucked, but I trust the tape. It sucked. It, you know, but film. <laughs> yeah, film dude. Like this ain't like a situation where all the Pittsburgh kids showed up terrible. Cause I ain't really like them no way. You know what I'm saying? Twyman yeah, showed Paris up. Yeah, Paris Ford can't play, so I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Paris Ford. Uh, Twyman showed up 300, and he was like 280 on film, and he showed up slower. So he's he's hustling backwards. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like that 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 situation. Um, Rashawn Slater. I love his film so much. If he would have would have tested terrible, I'm like, hey man, but hey, look the film. Yeah, that wasn't possible though. We knew he was going to test great. Yeah, there was no way he wasn't going to. It did a super athlete. Hey, can I bang through some super chats real quick? Hell yeah, get your money. Jr. The mailman. Is Sertan a lock at the tenth pick for us? Not a lock, but I'd call him the favorite. Is that fair, Foch? Would you call Sertan the favorite at ten for what they will do, not what we want them to do? Just one of my draft hunches. I think Sertan is going to be gone. You think he might go eight or nine? I think that 40 time was enough to make teams feel good. Like, if if you're a team that leans into 40 time in that way and you like the film but you had reservations, I think that 40 time and him playing corner put him put him into the top ten above us. And I don't mind that at all. Like, I wouldn't mind him as the pick. And if he's gone, I don't care either. If it means that, uh, for instance, the Eagles take uh, him over Kyle Pitts or a quarterback, sweet. I'd love that. Bright when Wendigo? Jeff, love your back. Sertan Horn better than Diggs? Yes. As prospects, they're both better than Diggs, comfortably. Vach, yes? I like Horn better than Diggs. Ooh. I had Diggs as a two, so I can't go back and lie about it because he's looked like it's going to work out. I probably got Sertan better than Diggs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Joe DeMaio 
Love you, Joe. Sertan Horn at 10, trade up for bad back far. Oh, trade down for bad back Farley. No, you can talk to me if Farley makes 44 and I'll talk about him. I don't want to talk about Caleb Farley in the first round. I'm terrified of backs. I'm not, I'm out. You had two back vasectomies and you didn't even have to play football in between, which, and you did the second one recently, which means something happened in training or whatever that sure. caused it. Mm -hmm. And so now mm -mm, 44, if we want to start taking home run swings. Okay. But before that, leave me alone. Let me offer you this. If his back is so bad that his ass make it to 44, I still don't want him. If it's that bad. You well, know what so what I did is I'm smarter than some NFL teams because mm -hmm. a lot of NFL teams, at least I know from talking to Will McClay, that the Cowboys, they don't adjust for people who are injured. Like oh. Jalen Smith, they didn't put him in a stack where they would actually pick him. They left him at the top. Mm -hmm. And then when they got on the clock, they were like, okay, and what about him? Because Will McClay told me we want those guys to stand out like a flashing light. And I'm like, well, why wouldn't you just put them where you pick them? So like Caleb Farley, I did it. I put him where, where I have him now. My new top corners is Horn, Sertan, Newsom, Joseph, Samuel, Molden, Farley. Farley, seven. That's where I would take the risk on his back is after the first six. So I got nuts. I put him where I'd pick him. Sure. My seventh corner. Sure. Um, People got to respect Greg, uh, Greg um, Newsom a little bit more too. Like Newsom is just like the more film I'm watching on him. That's the thing, the and more... that's why you got to keep watching, right? Yep. Because early, I think we both saw, thought the same thing. It was kind of boring. Like they run a lot of deep cover three, and you're like, okay, he does his job. They're not using him right. Then he tests great. Mm -hmm. Then I got every Northwestern game, so now I have ten or eight or whatever games on him. Yes. And you're like, okay, when he does play, man, you do see, oh my God, he does have a great feel for the position. Mm -hmm. So I think for me with Farley Hurt, it's a four-man tier before I go to the little guys that I love, like Samuel and Molden, mm -hmm. but it's Horn, Sertan, Newsom, Joseph. That's the four over six-foot ballers in this draft. Okay. I agree. I agree 100%. Um, I'm not going to drop my rankings until it's done, done. I still got... Work Coward. to do. Uh, well, Jeff, I mean, it just, we have till April to figure this out, and I've never been the type to turn that homework early. So I'll let y'all know in, like, week two of April when I drop all my rankings. It'll be an event. Um, OA Parsons, you, you don't feel great about Parsons, though, moving forward. Like, like regardless of his 4-3-9, which in real life is probably like a, a 4-4-5 four, four, or something. You, you, I think you're exactly right, too. If yeah. um, They did a science project on this once. I forgot what school, Harvard or whoever. Um, and they did where they compare um, pro day times to combine times. Mm -hmm. And on average, because pro days are handheld, yeah. you add .06 and you have their combine time. So Parsons would be a 4.45. Yeah. You add .06. Unless they're running on grass or it's a slow track. Like Fl Florida State has a fast track. But it's sure. just that's what makes it tough is they're all run on different surfaces. It's just it's tough. Yeah. Which is still impressive. Still impressive. Okay. I want to say thank you to Formula again, who just swung by to say that he's happy we're back. You know I love you, Formula. And I want to say hello to GDO22. Hey. I just have this feeling it's Parsons. What's your guess and why? My guess is, and I'm telling you, I could see Parsons being the pick for the Cowboys. I could totally see it because I think that's sexy to Jerry. They should not pick up Van Der Esch's fifth-year option. Yeah. And Jalen, I hope they cut after this year. So I could see it happening. I don't want it to happen. My gut is Sertan. I already told you. But Vach thinks Sertan might be gone. Do you have a gut? Do you have a guess? You have to guess. What's your guess? I think what's going on with Cowboy fans sometimes is that we trust our own pessimism just a little bit too much. When in, when in real life, we draft really well. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I understand Taco makes you sick. You know what I mean? But, like, if you were the Packers last year, then you hated all seven of your picks. I don't think we've ever hated all seven of our picks. So... I think they relatively may feel the same way that we feel about Parsons to where they wouldn't take him at 10. Plus, they're a real football football value type drafting crew to where we may feel a way about outside linebacker or whatever, off-ball linebacker. I think they may feel the same way. So I think they're going to go with premium spots like tackling corners. So it's probably going to be uh, Parsons, Horn, Slater. Par okay, but you are throwing in Parsons. Sure. If okay. if Par if Parsons is there, I think they may like Parsons a little more than Horn. It could be like an Alabama thing. They like their Alabama guys possibly. Um, but what I want is I want for Parsons to be gone so that Horn is available if we can't get. Slated. Okay, okay, you're saying Sertan. You keep saying Parsons, but you're talking about oh, Patrick shit. Sertan. My, my, Sertan, my bad. Yeah, my okay. Bad. 
Sir okay. Tan. Yes. Sir so Tan. Sir Tan Horn Slater. Yeah, I think that yeah. that's the same three pack. I think I would choose from. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And and look, like so, Sir Tan isn't my cornerback one or two. But if we get him, I'm fine with that because I'm fine with the you know with the guy. I'm fine with him. You know what I'm saying? Boss Man Fat is my cornerback one, but he like to choke his coach, and he like to have guns under the seat, and he got a mixtape link and all that shit. So I don't think Boss Man Fat gonna go. Let me ask you this though, brother Jeff. Uh, do you think we pull another situation because we feel so good about cornerback in round two and three that we decide to not go cornerback in round one just because it's so thick later? You could. Um, I hate that in practice. Yes. Like that the Cowboys thought about in the taco draft. Well, we're going to go edge corner corner. Cause that's what the draft sets up for mm -hmm. at least with my first pick. Please don't do that. Pick the best guy. I mean, I think we can talk about in theory, like, Hey, it really lines up that it might work out great. If you went tackle here because you can get the corner here Sure. because then what happens is let's say the Cowboys really like Horn, Sertan, Newsom, Joseph. Mm -hmm. And by the time you actually get to 44, there's been a run and Horn, Sertan, Newsom, Joseph, Samuel, Molden, Farley are gone. And now you're picking Eric Stokes or Melifonwu when you thought you were picking Joseph or Samuel, like don't, uh, don't mess around with it unless what you're messing around with isn't a premium position. And I think corner is premium enough that I'm just like, man, if you really like one, pick him. Don't, don't, don't count on the depth of the draft to save you. I think what makes it different is that we're drafting at 10. Last time Cowboys did it, they was drafting like 28 or something. So if I get Slater and I got to settle for Paulson Adebo, I'm fine with that. But if I got Horn and we still draft tackle anyway and I got to get Sam Cosby, I'm going to be sick that I got to get Sam Cosby. You see what I'm saying? So Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. I get it. The difference between Slater and, say, Cosme or Eichenberg Big. compared to the difference from corner to corner. Yeah, and, and, and that's something that even NFL teams, you do have to know those things. You have to consider those things, and they matter. I'm just like, man, I have a top 10 pick. Please, God, pick the best player available. Sure. Kevin wants to know if Farley was 100% healthy. What is, uh, what is high side, guys? Rock on. You gonna have to um, you gonna have to clarify, Kevin. I'm I'm lost on what what is is high side. What is his high side? What is his upside? I think that's like that's why people are obsessed with Farley. Like I don't think Farley to me does not have better tape than Sertan, Horn, Newsom, Joseph. He doesn't. Right. But if he had a pro day with the way these times are coming in, yeah. we would have got a four two five, and we would like you would have got some absurd numbers from Farley and. That plus ball production, like it makes him potentially Jalen Ramsey. So you're like, holy cow. Um, but that's that's for people who love to bet on upside. And I think more often than not, you're disappointed when you bet on upside. That's what I think. Uh, Farley is cornerback like five or so with me, even with a good back. So I don't think that means very much to me. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so Newsom, yeah. Joseph, yeah, and Horn and Sertan. Horn Sertan, yeah. Okay. Which ain't yep. crazy. Which ain't crazy. No, it's not crazy. Yeah. It's not crazy at all. It'll only be crazy to the people who have been blowing the Farley trumpet all this time. But right. whatever. He's good, just like a lot of the other guys are good. Let's talk about a handful of receivers, and I'm going to let you take a nap, Brother Jeff. Um, is it is it crazy to believe that Jalen Waddle may be like the first guy? No, he's my wide receiver one. Tell me why, Jeff. Um. I may end up being an idiot on this, and I'm okay with that. Um, and that's something you got to do in the draft world. Is sometimes you got to set yourself up to look like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Waddle is before he hurt the ankle. First of all, he had more yards and touchdowns than Devonte Smith did on an Alabama team. Uh, I actually saw a quote from the Missouri head coach this morning that was hilarious, where he was like, "You know, Devonte Smith won the Heisman." He was like, "But I was going into that Week One game and telling him." We're going to have to make Devontae Smith beat us because Jalen Waddle's a problem. Yeah. We're doubling him. Yeah. Um, Jalen Waddle gets open. And this, to me, is the most important thing. How good are you at getting open? Sure. Jalen Waddle gets open by further and easier than anyone I've ever watched in the seven years of doing wide receiver because he's just so fast. He's so quick. He's so explosive. When he hesitates and goes, there's nothing you can do about it because you can't move like him. Right. It's. And the Tyreek Hill thing gets thrown around for everybody who's super fast, but it's Tyreek Hillish where I just, I don't think you can cover Jalen Waddle one-on-one with anybody in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can do it. He's just, and he's not perfect. Like he's not a, he's not a great route runner yet. He's an okay route runner, but 
And he doesn't do it in the Henry Ruggs way. With, in, with Henry Ruggs, Alabama would scheme it up for him to run these deep overs and get man coverage. With Jalen Waddle, it's a variety of ways. It's, you know, it's short game, it's deep game, it's the crossers, and it is a lot of the crossers, but you just you can't run with him. And and he's got solid hands and he's hell on wheels after the catch. He's just so freaking explosive. Like Jamar Chase doesn't get open like Jalen Waddle. Devontae Smith's a great route runner. He doesn't get open like Jalen Waddle. Nobody does. Jalen Waddle is a freak show. He's he's a monster. I think when people look for Tyreek Hill, they search for guys that are just fast. I think fast is kind of overrated because everybody kind of fast. Everybody ain't Tyreek Hill fast, but everybody's fast. I think what makes uh, what makes Waddle close to that is his acceleration on the move. You know what I mean? Like and if he you runs up on a guy and then goes da 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 and yes. then takes off whichever way he's going and they're still standing there and they go, Oh my god, he's three times as fast as me. I can't catch up, it's over. And yeah. let me just kinda like clean up what I mean on the move. Because I mean they're all moving. But if you look at like Henry Ruggs, right? Last year I was talking about the Southern Miss film, right? To where he sped up and slowed down and sped up and you know what I'm saying? He was he was doing those kind of moves. That's acceleration, but that's like straight line acceleration. You know what I mean? Waddle is this. Waddle is he can plant his foot, not move, and in a second he's zero to sixty in either direction. That's what I think is different about Waddle. And I and you know I'm not patting myself on the back of man like that, but I was trying to tell people slow down on Rugs a little bit. You know what I mean? But you 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 don't you don't understand what Rugs was until you look at Waddle for real for real and be like, hey man, I had Rugs all the way messed up because this dude is what I thought Rugs was. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes, Waddle's not the best route runner in the world, but he's a good route runner for that type of receiver, for that fast like Smalley do. And also, again, like a big coaching point, like I'm not drafting people on what they can't do anymore. You know what I'm saying? If you're looking for, well, I need a 6'4 and a this 40 and route running and dot, dot, route tree, if that's what you're doing, then you're doing it wrong. You got to do, okay, what do you do well? You know what I'm saying? And if you stick to what Jalen Waddle does well, which is practical – you know what I'm saying? He's probably yeah. the the best practical guy out of all this because a lot of NFL is short game now, short game, quick game. And if you get the ball to Jalen Waddle, short game, quick game, good luck to you. He also gives you vertical stuff. Um, I ain't ready to say Jalen Waddle is wide receiver one, but I wouldn't be surprised if he goes one. Um, fantastic player. When I look at Devontae Smith, if you if you take away like. So I was looking at him, right, and I was like, yo, he does a lot of CeeDee Lamb things, but he, but he's not after the ball CD Lamb guy, but he's smooth dude, route setup guy, find the open space guy. I'm longer than you thought I was guy. I can really high point the ball. Don't worry about me being skinny. I'm a little more, more like, physical than you thought. I'm from Alabama, so we're coached to block people, so I'm going to block you. Waddle blocks as well. Um Devontae Smith is that guy. Now, I I do think he got some Heisman hype. You know, part of his draft thing is, oh, well, we're going to take Devontae Smith at three. And you can. You know what I'm saying? But I think a lot of that came from him being super, like, back half of Alabama season. Because, look, like you just said, right, the coach was like, hey, man, we got to stop Waddle and just let Smith. Smith in the first two games of the season, that makes sense. Smith didn't turn into a demigod until, like, they lost Waddle. Right, till till they lost Waddle and they had to go to Smith. You see what I'm saying? So I think a lot of what Smith was production wise was the loss of Waddle. If Waddle was there, Waddle might still be Heisman dude. I could still I could see Waddle getting more big plays, more touchdowns, turning more slant into 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 bigger yak plays. Not that Smith is bad. I just think that Waddle is different. Go ahead. I actually and I like I'm a big Smith fan Love and him. going into his tape, I'd already loved him because I'd already been defending him because I don't care how much you weigh at all. Mm -hmm. Um and so that doesn't bother me about Smith at all. But I actually thought when I was going into his tape that he would be more explosive than he was. Like he is incredibly smooth. He's really good stop and go. Mm -hmm. But I think what makes him great is one of the attention to detail things that a lot of receivers don't do like most fast guys, when they're running a stop route, they run, they stop, they turn around, but Devonte Smith runs. And part of the stop is coming back to the ball and attacking it. And then he'll make the contested catch. Mm -hmm. And so like he does the little things, right. Yes. And so, yeah, he's just, he's nuanced. He's detailed. He runs well enough, 
but he's not as explosive as I thought he was from just watching him live. And maybe part of that is that you're also watching Waddle on the same field. Sure. And so nobody's going to look explosive. Mm-hmm. Um, he's good, and he's a first-round player, and I like him. But, I, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with I like Waddle more. I think when you when you go back and watch them and you're not listening to like broadcasters and you're not listening to all the hype and they're not putting up graphics showing you what he did last week and stuff like that, I think you really come down on him a lot. And not that he's a bad player because I still think he can go top 10. I, I think he's that kind of dude. Um, it's just that I think he ends up being quicker than people because they don't expect him to be that quick. Or he wins a lot of high point balls because, I mean, he looks he, – he doesn't look long – but his arm's long as hell. You know what I mean? I just think a lot of his game is, like, surprising. Then yeah. he's, like, slick. And then he's a route runner on the level of the great Bama route runners. You know what I'm saying? Like, he sets up routes with routes. He patients you up. He, I'm going to run this slant, but it looks like a fade. You know what I mean? So and you can't press him. Like, he's awesome at getting off the press. Sure. He's got this great little shoulder drop where you can't get hands on him. Like, he's just – he's really, really good and refined. Yes. Um, one thing I really like about both the Bama guys is that we have proof of them playing without their partner. You know what I'm saying? So we just can't say, oh, well, Smith is good because Waddle is there because there was a big a big chunk of time where Waddle wasn't there. And, you know, we've, we've seen Waddle get off with many guys around him. You know what I'm saying? So we can just kind of well, – Even as a freshman, Waddle was kind of going bonkers. Sure, And absolutely. by the way, next year we're going to be talking about his – what's his name? Mitchum? Mitchum? Because when I was watching those two, I was like, how come neither one of them is the one killing – I forgot what game it was. Mm-hmm. But it's the other guy, that's, which was what Devontae Smith was for me last year. I was watching and I was like, how come the best receiver on Alabama is not in the draft this year? Why didn't he declare? Uh, they got another one coming next year. Uh BJ's world at the dropping a hundun in my damn super chat and yours. He dropped another dub in mine and says, please inform Jeff on IHOP and why we don't want none. Uh, Jeff, that's a long story. I'm going to have to send you a link and a timestamp. So you ain't just like <laughs> watching my whole live stream. But, but, okay. but like three days ago, I dead ass had the best live stream I've ever had. And we wasn't even talking about football for an hour of it. An hour of it. We was just sitting around listening to music. Shots out to Cash Kai. I don't know if Cash Kai in the chat box right now, but he's a, he's a, uh, he's a rapper that, you know, uh, watches my, um, work or whatever. And he's a pillar in my damn community. We're going to get there at some point. Tell me about Jay Marchese, Jeff, where you got him amongst the other, uh, the other Bama guys or the Bama guys. I'm not, I, these are not definitive yet. Sure. We got time. I, I think Chase will end up second. Uh, cause I think he is faster than he gets credit for. Sure. I think he can run pretty well. Um, but there's so many things about his game that tempt me to be like, that's a second round player Mm. where like, he's not a great separator. He's not a great route runner. He's kind of just a bully, but he was like, like Sewell. I think he was 19 years old when he did what he did at LSU. And it was basically just pushing dudes around, dominating them at the catch point, um, hesitating and going and running by people, so to me, he's the toughest one to get a handle on because the production's unreal at a young age, sure. um, physically dominant. But I've started drifting towards guys who can separate because I think that's something that that translates and I know how you're going to win. And with him, I mean, maybe he's DeAndre Hopkins. Like not a not a burner, not a great separator, sure. but just kind of tough bully. I will win the ball, and I'll be tough after the catch, and I run well enough. I think he's going to be receiver two for me, but I do kind of struggle with him. He is one of those I just get it done guys, and when we're projecting to the next level, it's weird to just be I just get it done guy. You know what I mean? Like you, like you have to show me something that's go- like I can project Jalen Waddle's speed to the next level. I can, or his athleticism. I can project Devontae Smith's nuance to the next level. Jamar Chase kind of gets it done, and he got it done in this offense that was incredible and easy to get it done in. You know what I mean? So you have to be aware of that when you're watching him. But he did it in the SEC. He beat the hell out of the best competition. And he and he put up stupid numbers he did it to everybody he played. Yes, you still got to make them catches. You 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 still got to beat those guys, like those top tier SEC guys. You still got to beat them. Um, I just wish he would he would have played football this year so we could see him with the bad quarterback. But 
he made a great business decision. Hey man, I'm going out with with my ring with Burrow. <laughs> it might have worked out though. I mean, Terrence Marshall was out there balling for a bad LSU team. Sure, sure, possibly, possibly. I do think Jamar is a stud though. I just when we do this draft thing, it's all about projecting. And on the next level, how are you going to win? You know what I'm saying? And you could just win bullying and being physical, but I don't think he's built in that way. Like like Michael uh, Michael Pittman last year, uh, USC, Pittman was, Pittman. P- Pittman was built that way, to where he was a bigger, smooth dude, to where he would physical through people, but he was that size enough to physical through people. Chase is like, what, six foot, six one, two? F- yeah, I think he's about, I think he's six foot. About six foot two fifteen or so. I don't know how how you gonna bully guys on the next level like that. Like you probably gonna gain five more grown man pounds, but I just don't see how it projects. So this is one I could definitely be be wrong about. I'm not gonna jump out on the ledge on this one. Um, but I got Waddle better, and I got Smith one under him. Yeah, I just I don't I don't know for sure where he's gonna end up because I tell you what, like I watched Elijah Moore today, yeah. and I love him. Like there's gonna be other receivers in this class that, I miss. Uh, and I watch Bateman, eh, mm-hmm. like him, yeah. don't love him. Yeah. So like I think my wide receiver rankings may be very different than the rest of the world, but I'm cool with that. Hey, I gotta say hi to Nathan. Nathan, I appreciate you, buddy. Yeah. You prefer cornerback at ten, trade back into the first, take the second best cornerback if still on the board, and miss out on second and third round picks, or have more picks to throw at the board. Okay, so in theory, this question would be: Would you take Horn? then trade your two and three, come back in and take Newsom and not pick again until 99? Nah. Or would you rather pick one, <laughs> two, and three? Nah. I'm, I'm keeping all my picks. I'm keeping my four top 100 picks and my team that drafts well, I'm going to do that. Like if you're the Packers, that probably work well for you, but the Cowboys hit on third and fourth round picks, so we're going to keep those. If I told you that you could have Horn and Newsom, it's just going to take you 10 – uh, 44 and 75. You won't do it? That'll be great, but I also want Richie Grant and Marvin Wilson somewhere. Well, you and can't I have also... everything, sir. Shit, if I, keep my, if I keep my first four, I can. We got to see if Richie Grant makes 44, though. He's not. He's not. Yeah, so I don't and know how we're going to get Richie Grant. So, so I'm, I'm conditioning my mind to be able to go without it because people will always say that safeties don't go – first round like if you see everybody's mock they got richie grant at 44 like vice supposed to be impressed with your mock draft because you got richie grant at 44 but if you think about rangy safeties they go in the 20s they go fast they go in the 20s malik um, hooker went fast malik hooker uh uh derwin james uh little missile darnell savage they go early so i'm preparing myself now what makes this interesting is that more rig exists so if more rig go in the 20s and somehow Richie Grant stumbles, I need to trade up and go get Richie Grant. I ain't trying I to eat no. I, I, that, that's 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 part of the inside joke, Jeff. You you just would have you just would have had to been there, man. You just would have had to. Had I'm to scared of IHOP and Waffle House. Um, because my experience with those places is going there super drunk at like two a.m. and there's always fist fights in the IHOP or the Waffle House. So I don't like those places. I'm scared. Oh, man. Uh, Jeff, this was a uh, good show. You got any more Super Chats you want to wrap up over there? You got any other little... You know we are I mean? good on this side. Uh, we are good on this side. Hey, everybody who's watching, though, remember that I love you. You have no idea what anybody else is going through, so be cool to everybody, all right? Love you. All right. So, uh, and for everybody that's on my side or whatever, you know what I'm saying, y'all know uh, to follow Jeff over on his channel. He drops plenty of mock drafts. I don't feed into that nonsense. Oh, um, let's do a mock draft. Next show you want to do a mock draft, Jeff? No, no. I just wanted to see if you'd get mad for the suggestion. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel that 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 great about it. But uh, follow me on Twitter, <laughs> vochlombrd. I follow Jeff on uh, JC1053, uh, and his his YouTube channel is the most important because he got Twitter followers. But go check out his YouTube, Jeff Cavanaugh. Oh yeah, YouTube. follow Vach on Twitter because he has YouTube subscribers. Mm. He needs the Twitter followers. My Twitter. Tell your friends. My Twitter is indeed blowing up. Uh, shout out to Cash Cat. All right, y'all. Y'all hold down for the Dusky. What's going to be?